What's up guys, my name is Preston Palmer of Student Engineering, where my goal is to help engineering students like me better understand engineering. So in this video, for your guys' convenience, I've put together all my videos about vectors and taken out the example problems so that you guys can learn everything you need to know about vectors in static engineering. And this video is part one of two videos. The link to the second video will be at the end of this video. And if you like these videos, please subscribe. So, a vector is a quantity with both a magnitude and a direction. So as an example, say you were giving directions to someone as to how to get to the post office. You wouldn't just say it's four blocks, you'd say it's four blocks that way. So four blocks is the magnitude and that way is the direction. So we can draw vectors as arrows with the direction being the way it's pointing and the magnitude being how long the arrow is. So we're going to say this is 10 units long and 45 degrees off the x-axis. Like that. So we can say this vector, we'll call it vector f, and the way you label vectors is you put an arrow over the top of the variable. Like that. That's how you do it usually handwritten. And in your book you might see it being bolded. Something like that. So, Another term you need to know is a scalar. A scalar is like a vector, but it only has a magnitude. You'll do math on vectors and you'll come up with scalar values, which just means that it doesn't have a direction. So like any quantity, you can do math on vectors and we'll start with addition. So let's say we have two vectors, vector A, we'll call this vector A, and vector B. And let's say we want to add vector A to vector B. So A plus B, and we'll call the result vector C. So what we do is we use what's called the parallelogram law. And that's where we put the tail of A to the head of B, and the result will be the arrow between them. So we'll draw A again, and we'll draw B coming off of it like that. And so vector C is going to be this arrow. So subtraction is very similar to addition in that we just make one, the one we're subtracting negative. So say we want a negative B. We're just going to write, draw B going the opposite direction. Still going to have the same length just a different going in the opposite direction. So to subtract them, we'll say a minus b equals vector d, draw a, and a negative b and we'll call the result d. So multiplying and dividing is very similar in that we just make the vector arrow longer or shorter. And so it basically only affects the magnitude of the arrow. So say again we have vector A and we want to multiply it by 2. Well we're just going to draw it twice as long. So this will be 2A. Say we want to divide it by 2, well you basically just multiply it by its reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. So if we want 1 half a, or divide it by 2, we'll just have half the length. So that's multiplying, dividing, subtracting, and adding vectors. Pretty simple. So a Cartesian vector is a vector written out in this form into what's called its components. We often have to deal with 3D vectors 
in engineering, math, physics, and an easier way to deal with them is by representing them in their x, y, and z components, or how far a vector goes in each of those directions. But what we need to understand first is what's called the right hand rule. So the right hand rule is if you stick your right hand out, your thumb is going in the z direction, your fingers are going in the x direction, and your arm is going in the y direction. That helps you keep track of which direction is represented by the x, y, and z axes. And so recall that a vector is made up of a magnitude and a direction. Well, a Cartesian vector splits that up into both of those components. You got a sub x, a sub y, and a sub z being the magnitude of how far that vector a is going in each of those directions, and the i, j, and k going in or representing the directions, and we'll get that to that in a bit. So the reason why Cartesian vectors are often easier to deal with is because if you have multiple vectors that you want to add up, all you have to do is add up their components. How far it, each vector is going in the x, y, and z directions, and so what you'll get is a resultant Cartesian vector. And so that is written out by what we'll call vector f sub r, because it's the resultant vector, is equal to the sum of the vectors, which equals the sum of their components. So f sub x in the i direction plus the sum of the y components in the j direction plus the sum of the z components in the k direction. So as you probably figured out by now, the i, j, and k represent how far the vector is going in each of those directions. The i being represented going how far it's going in the x direction, the j how far it's going in the y direction, and the k how far it's going in the z direction. And so we can add how far they're going up in each of those directions and get the resultant vector. So say that now we want to find what the magnitude of a is. Well now we just add up the square root of the sum of the squares or the square root of all of these components squared. And that will look like the magnitude of A equals the square root of A sub X squared plus A sub Y squared plus A sub Z squared. And this will give this the us the magnitude of the vector a. Again, that's the square root of the sum of the squares. It's important to remember. And if you're just working in 2D space, you can just drop the a, the a sub z component and it'll just be a sub x and a sub y, which ends up looking a lot like the Pythagorean theorem. So now let's say we want to find the direction of the vector a, not using the components. And so the way we can do that is by representing the vector a of how far it goes off of the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis with angles alpha, beta, and gamma. And so in this video we're going to be using several different Greek letters, and if you're not familiar with them, I wrote them up on the, on the, in the corner, and sorry if they're not written how you're, how you're used to seeing them, but do my best. So we can use these formulas to find the different angles or solve for different unknowns. Say you have, have some of these angles but you don't have the different components. Well you can use these four equations to solve for those different, um, for the different components, whatever you're looking for. And so to be honest, you're probably not gonna use this very much, but you might come across a problem that does have you find the angles um, between the vector and the different axes. So a more common way to do that 
is what's with what's called unit vectors. So a unit vector is kind of like a unit circle in that the unit circle its radius is just one. So a unit vector its magnitude is just one and its direction is what's important and it's what we care about. So say we have vector A, the magnitude of vector A is just going to be a vector going in the same direction but that's just one unit long. So we'll call this u sub a for a unit vector. So a unit vector is just the vector divided by its magnitude and that will give us just the direction of the vector. And so we can write that out as u for unit vector sub a equals the a vector divided by its magnitude, which split into co its components is a sub x divided by a in the i hat direction plus a sub y divided by its magnitude in the j direction plus a sub z divided by a in the k direction around the room. So we'll see later in this video, in the example problem, and in other videos, how we use unit vectors to solve problems in that we might not be able to do otherwise. All right, guys, here's a few more equations that you might find helpful. Um, we're introducing A prime, which kind of makes, goes from one corner to the other corner of this square formed by A sub X and A sub Y. And then a couple more Greek letters, theta and phi. And theta goes from the x-axis over to A prime. And, and phi goes from the z-axis over to our vector A. And so you can use these to find the different components of A. And that'll help you solve um, whatever problems you might need to that your textbook gives you. Sometimes it gives it in different forms. It might give you the value for A prime. It might give you some of these angles. It might give you the components and ask you to solve for different things. You just never know. So the more formulas you have, the more you're able to solve, I've found. Position and force vectors help us apply what we've learned about vectors to solve engineering problems. A position vector is a vector that relates one point to another point in space where the magnitude of the vector is the distance between the two points and the direction is how to get from one point to the other. A force vector is a vector that represents a force acting along objects usually like a rope or a cable where the magnitude is the, how big the force is and the direction is the direction along the rope or the cable. So say you're given two points in space, point A and point B. If you want to draw a vector between point A and point B, you can use this formula. The position vector R equals x sub B minus x sub A i hat plus y sub B minus y sub A j hat plus z sub b minus z sub a k hat. So this formula will give you a Cartesian vector relating one point to another where you can use this to find the direction of say a force vector if you're given a rope with a point at both ends of the rope you can find the unit vector to find direction of the force along that rope. 